Alrighty guys, we're back for a human celebration, and this is a Wild of Eldraine standard brew. We're gonna go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to ya. Also, we do get that Discord link as well as that relatively new Patreon link down in the description if you're interested in joining either of those up. Okay, what do we got packed into the build here? First of all, we're going to go over all the new stuff. So we got Ash Party Crasher. This is a 2-mana, two 2-2 two -two legendary creature, human peasant, rocking haste and celebration. So whenever Ash attacks, if two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Ash. Seems like a relatively decent creature, man. I think we're going to get that counter very often. Speaking of relatively decent creatures, we also have three Godric Cloaked Revelers in here. This is a three mana, three three legendary creature, human noble, to rock in haste and celebration. As long as two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn, Godric Cloaked Reveler is a dragon with base power and toughness 4-4. It has flying and for one red mana, dragons you control get plus one plus oh until end of turn. Decent card, dude, to say the least. <laughs> Speaking of decent cards, <laughs> we also have four Charming Scoundrel. We got a lot of power packed into this build, man. There's a two mana, one, one human rogue. It has haste, and when it ETBs, you get to choose one. So you can discard a card, then draw a card, or create a treasure token, or create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. So the wicked roll is an aura. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. And whenever this aura is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. Yeah, just a really good creature, man. It's going to be really easy to just play this and then activate all of our celebration effects and stuff like that. So, yep, very solid. Okay, more new cards. We have a single Witch's Mark. I'm just trying out a one of in here just to kind of see. I, I want to get a feel for this card, see where it belongs, right? So it's a two mana sorcery. You may discard a card if you do draw two cards. Okay, create a wicked roll token attached to up to one target creature you control. Yeah, I don't think this card is bad. Like I said, I just want to get a feel for it. So a one of in here. More new cards. We have all four Embereth Veterans. This is a one mana, two one human knight. For one mana, you can sacrifice Embereth Veteran. Create a young hero roll token attached to another target creature. The young hero roll is an aura. An enchanted creature has whenever this creature attacks. If its toughness is three or less, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So I don't know how often we actually activate the ability on this card, but it's mainly in here because it's a 1 mana 2-1 one that's also a human, right? Uh, so <laughs> being able to play the Embereth Veteran alongside with like Recruitment Officer, giving us another 1 mana 2-1 human, just seems pretty good, huh? But also in like the late game, you could activate that bottom ability and get that young hero roll token out as on the same turn that you cast the Veteran, right? And then activate all of your celebration effects too. So that could come in handy. More new cards over here in the mana base. We have the Restless Abivoac, something like that. <laughs> so it enters tapped, unfortunately. You can tap this for Boros colors, nice. And then for one, a red and a white, you can have Restless Abivoac become a 2-2 red-white ox creature until end of turn. It's still a land, and whenever Restless Abivoac attacks, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Nice. Seems like a really solid land, huh? Before I go over the rest of the mana base, what else do we got in here? We got a couple of Yotian Frontliners, the only card in here that is not a human, but luckily we can still cast the Frontliner with Secluded Courtyard, which is uh, acting as our fast land for this Boros build. So yeah, I don't think uh, Secluded Courtyard is going to hold us up at all in here. The only things that it can't cast is actually Ren's Resolve and the Witch's Mark. So yeah, got a couple of Ren's Resolve in here too, just because seeing more off the top in a build like this is really going to come in handy, huh? Have a single Reinforced Ronin in here, so we don't get to see this too often, believe it or not. So it's a 1 mana 2-2 two -two with haste, and at the beginning of your end step, you return Reinforced Ronin to its owner's hand, which happens to not be that bad, especially in like a Celebration build where we don't mind just playing more 1-drops next turn anyways, right? And activating all those Celebration effects. Also has a channel ability for one in a red. You can discard this to draw a card. It's just not a bad creature at all, and it fits the human theme. And speaking of the human theme, we have all four Copper Coat Vanguards. Uh, two mana, two two. Each other human you control gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and has Ward One. Very powerful creature, dude. And more powerful creatures because that's all we have packed in here. Apparently, we got three Feldons. Yep, gonna be excellent in here. Also have four Brutal Cathars, fitting that human theme, acting as removal. Beautiful. 
Got three Sunrise Cavaliers at three mana, three, three. Trample Haste is not bad, especially in a deck where we can easily buff this, right? We can put that Charming Scoundrel Wicked Roll right onto the Cavalier. That could be decent, man, and it might actually be enough to have a 4-4 Trample Haste, and then if it ever dies, at least the Wicked Roll does an extra damage to the opponent which uh, technically isn't a damage, right? The opponent loses one life. It's not, it doesn't deal one damage, but yeah, still, <laughs> that doesn't matter in this deck anyways. And then also, I guess we don't get to see Cavalier too often, so I'll read that bottom ability. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Sunrise Cavalier enters the battlefield. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Beautiful, guys. Also in the mana base, guys, of course, Seat of, em the em seat of the Empire. Oh my goodness. We got a couple Crucible of Defiance in here too. A rock and two of them because dropping a couple spirits also activates the celebration effects. So that realistically could come in handy. Also just getting more creatures. We've won plenty of games with Crucible in the past. I think the two of in here is going to be uh, warranted. We got more Fastland with the Forge and only a couple Sundown Pass because... I'm not convinced we're going to need more dual land and it does slow us down a lot in the early turns where it, since we have all four secluded courtyard, I think we're going to be able to go pretty fast in this one, huh? Got some honorable mentions. We got to at least consider Kumano faces Kakazan. But yeah, since we're going the secluded courtyard route, I don't think Kumano is the right piece for this build. Just so powerful and technically it works really well with all of our two drops and everything, so... And I thought about uh, pushing it into like the Thalia side of things. I just thought like, not this time. I, I ran out of room in the build really fast. Like where would we fit the Thalia? I have no idea, honestly. So, but it could be good. Honorable mention for a reason, right? Also thought about the Argivian uh, Recruiter in here. I think it would be really easy to get those extra soldiers. And if we're pushing it into that soldier side of things, then Mural would be a really solid top end, at least as like a one of or something. But yeah. Like I said, honorable mentions for a reason. Couldn't really find room for all that nonsense, right? We got so many new cards packed in, so. Okay, guys, is that everything? Hopefully I went over the build well enough. Let's go ahead, take it into some ranked, and see how we do. All right, guys, right into that first match. Let's go. Okay. So what am I expecting from the build? I'm actually expecting a little bit, man. I, I think this could be absolutely insane aggro. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, seems like a solid start. We have so many one drops in here. We might draw into one. The opponent goes first here too. So we might see a one drop off the top, which would be really good. No, nah, more land. That's fine too. And get that mountain down oh boy dark slick shores over there from the opponent we'll see if we can even uh play our two drop successfully is it just felled on for the turn ash next turn maybe i'm actually gonna go uh forge here the reason I'm thinking Feldon over Ash is because if it gets countered, I want to play with my new cards. <laughs> okay, Feldon hit, so it might just be spot removal. No, two damage through. Nothing from the opponent for the turn. Wow. Okay. Okay, three mana, passing it back. Hey, there's a second Ash, so now if the first one gets picked up, that's totally fine. And it's probably the Sunrise Cavalier, because next turn we can double down on the copper coat and an ash, so let's see what happens to the cavalier first. At this point, if it is gonna be spot removal, then the cavalier gets picked up instead of the Feldon, which could be decent. Like it's not terrible, right? Baraska's fall, each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker gets a poison counter. So I think I'm gonna sacrifice the Feldon just for more damage from the cavalier. Plus it's a three mana card. Depending on what deck we were up against, right? Like, Feldon can be an absolute pain in the butt that, like, the opponent never wants to block because then we end up seeing a lot off the top or something, too. So, it really depends. Found some spot removal for that as well. Okay. We got our new land, too. But for the turn, we're going to be doubling down. Start with the Ash. Keep the two open if it's, like, a make disappear, right? Hmm, at that point though, maybe we should have started with Vanguard and went into Ash, because now if Vanguard gets countered, 
We just have the second Ash in hand, which isn't doing a lot. Yeah, that's a little bit rough, huh? So we're going to need to see more off the top that just isn't land. This, this is a lot of land <laughs> to be seeing for this deck, so... Raska's Fall. Holy cow, dude. This is rough, man. <laughs> Distorted Curiosity. Restock a little bit. And another Ash. Oh, no, guys. Oh, no. Well, I mean, I guess it, it might get spot removed, too. So, well, it wasn't a cut down for the turn. Hmm. Now, that's all three Ash. We could be drawing a little bit better. <laughs> Opponent, dude, what on earth? We have four poison counters. We better just play the land for the sake of having extra land here, too. And Feldon, that's a good draw. That's a good draw, at least, right? Because now we can get the celebration on the Ash, too. <gasps> no way. Oh my goodness, dude. Oh my goodness, the opponent's deck is spot removal and counters, guys. Can we get there? <laughs> the ultimate question, man. Their last card like a cut down? No? Okay, bring the ending. Two of them are out of the build. Three Vraska's Falls out of the build. Um, so the Distorted Curiosity drew them to one Drown and Icor out of the build. Two Drown and Icors out of the build. Oh my goodness, we see some land here. Let's, let's see the power of this restless land, huh? Put that counter into itself. Opponent's down to six. We might still be able to get there, guys. <laughs> Very brutal first game, man. Um, the memory deluge helping them see more. Oh, they're doing it on their turn. That's good news because we might be able to just draw a hasty thing off the top, like a Sunrise Cavalier would do it. Copper Coat doesn't have haste. Um, this is going to be... We'll keep seat in hand. See, they tapped out too, so... Um, I'm just gonna swing for four, man. See, they restocked their hand, unfortunately, which is pretty rough, but... Yeah, if this was like a human powering up, then we would have wanted to play Vanguard before combat, obviously, but... Okay, there's their third Drown and Icor. Guys, what a brutal build from the opponent, man. <laughs> okay, more land. That's not great. I'm on the edge of my seat. This is like one of those, this is one of those games. Okay, it has to be spot removal from the opponent. And it's not like we don't power this up, right? Like we don't, we can't hold back. We can't give them any more turns. We have to just hope that they don't have more. Did we get there with the land? <laughs> Let's go guys. That's so funny, dude. What on earth? What a brutal build. Um, We were at six poison, so it was only a matter of time, honestly, uh, with all the proliferate. So three Drown and Icors, three Veraska's Falls, two Bring the Endings. So we, we went through um, six pieces of spot removal and two counter spells that game. That was so excessive. <laughs> I also feel like we could have drawn a little bit better. We saw a lot of land there. Uh, we didn't, ha I guess like, no, that wasn't a mulligan hand, but it definitely could have been a faster hand there too. So it's really funny, dude. Uh, hey, that land looks solid, huh? Being able to boost itself every turn with that counter seems really good. Like who knows, maybe the spot removal they ended up having there was like a cut down or something. And since it was buffing itself so effectively, you know, it was a four, four that turn. Yeah, you never know, dude. I see this could be a faster hand. If we see a... Oh, opponent goes first again, unfortunately. Uh, if we see our third mana on time, then this could be really good, right? We won't have the celebration for a little while, though. Okay, yeah, this is, this is keepable. I don't think there's anything to complain about here whatsoever. Okay, there's our mana. So we could skip our one drop. And just go restless for the turn. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay, because keeping a one drop back in hand means there's a higher likelihood of activating celebrations by seeing more one drops off the top and stuff too. So like, or two drops at that point in the game too. Yeah, I don't mind that. 
Still going to be a hasty ash next turn. Electrostatic infantry. Okay. Ooh, charming scoundrel. Charming scoundrel is pretty good. We would want to go mountain to not take damage. And I'm going to keep the scoundrel back for now. Go ash. Uh, ash gets picked up by burn pretty easily, unfortunately. Which is probably what this deck has, right? <laughs> Rocking the electrostatic infantry, I can only imagine it's all the burn possible. All the uh, play with fires, all the lightning strikes, and, and some, right? Invasion of Tarkir, that's going to pick up Ash instead of hit face, I can only imagine, right? So Godric can come down next turn. They buff that infantry at all. It might be worth a swing at that invasion. Like, Monstrous Rage on the infantry would get the infantry to the 5 damage, right? So, yeah, Monstrous Rage looks nasty. Not that turn, though. Upper Coat Vanguard. Now, the, the big question here is, like, when do we keep back blockers? Because if they flip this next turn, which is likely, it might be worthwhile having a Godric as a blocker. There's lots to think about here, guys. If we go Godric this turn, we can go Scoundrel, Treasure, go into the Vanguard, and then that's a really good swing. It is, in fact, my go opponent. That is, that's true. <laughs> let's go Godric and... Let's go Godric, Blocker, and if they go Lightning Strike into Godric, then it's not hitting our face, it's not hitting the Invasion, it's taking care of the Godric, and then they swing at the Invasion. And that's just more damage not hitting our face, right? Unfortunately, for this game, I think we had to go on the defense. There's the lightning strike, okay? <laughs> the full swing at the invasion of Park here. Um, land off the top could be good. We we have to consider it now. They're gonna have a 4-4. Ooh. They're gonna have a 4-4 dragon. So now they can go one to Tark here, one to face. Oh, they're going two to face. Oh, there they go. And they're going to have a 4-4 dragon to block with. Hmm. All right, this is going to be a tough uphill battle, guys, for sure. Which is Mark. Hopefully they start fizzling out here soon. At this point, I'm going to try to get as much on the board as possible. We're going to go Treasure Token and get the Vanguard down for the turn as well. That's a 2-1. We don't got great blockers. They got the Thunder Maw that can pick everything up. Oh no, guys. This one's not looking great. I feel like our hand was fine, though. Swift Spear. This is definitely uh, the type of build that's rocking the brand new Monstrous Rage, though. Like, Monstrous Rage and a, a Mono Red Prowess would be nasty. Oh, wow, they hit a Stoke the Flames if they really... If, like, we had a locked down board state here. Two damage to any target, take out the Vanguard. And then, I guess at that point, it wasn't even worth... Wasn't even worth getting the Vanguard down because we knew the dragon was going to swing, right? So... I don't know. I don't know about this game, guys. We'll go Godric. And then we'll go Recruitment Officer. Get that uh, dragon. Swing for five. It is, in fact, a GG's opponent. Like, I guess there could have been a thing where we did Witch's Mark and discarded the Frontliner. Okay game up on i already dropped the gg right wow uh yeah their their deck did a thing and it did a thing really fast man so i i don't know what we could have done there <laughs> some sometimes when we come out of games like that i'm like oh yeah i think that could have gone either way i don't i don't think so that time i think that was going to be the opponents man we would have needed a completely different lineup for that match and i honestly i don't know what that lineup would have looked like All right, Apony, what'd you bring into the table, buddy? Okay. Right. Yes? Yes. Keepable. 
this is the type of hand where instead of going treasure on scoundrel, we probably go for the wicked roll instead. It depends what we end up drawing. Oh no, the opponent goes first again. Okay. That's okay, guys. Eventually we'll go first. Eventually. Go right into the frontliner here instead of the veteran. Mm, we could have gone like Crucible veteran. I like keeping Crucible back though. Okay. And frontliner happens to be decent too with all of our hasty cards. This looks like spot removal. We're actually going to go Feldon over Scoundrel. Okay, decent damage. No spot removal from the opponent there, surprisingly, right? Path of Peril. Ooh, they must have two of those in hand. Going for it right away there, right? If we go Treasure, we could get one of the other cards down too. Go a little bit wide here, maybe. Go Witch's Mark while we don't have anything on the board, then that's not... Yeah, that's not the greatest. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Let's go Scoundrel Treasure. Go a little wide here. Get the Veteran down. We'll see if they have that Path of Peril number two, huh? So land off the top would be good. Um, and if we don't see it, Witch's Mark is pretty good next turn, right? Listening Deluge. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh no, going wide was worth it. We saw the uh, Copper Coat Vanguard off the top, but two board wipes in a row? Oh man, that's pretty gross, man. All right, I guess we just like awkwardly play the Copper Coat Vanguard here. <laughs> it's not doing too much, man. We definitely want to see our third mana scene. Edgar comes down, wow. Okay, um, Edgar's a problem. Recruitment officer. I think it's Witch's Mark time and see if we can see that land. So we'll ditch the Yotian frontliner, which is pretty good. There's our land, guys. That's good. That's good. Another Vanguard is excellent, too. Uh, we could actually go frontliner, buff the Vanguard, see if they trade. Like, Edgar's, like, such a terrible trade, though. <laughs> like, trading into that is so bad. So we hold back for the turn, and I'm really hoping they don't find another Path of Peril or something, dude. That would be devastating. However, this looks like board wipe the deck at this point, right? Oh no, it is board wipe the deck. Oh no, I was gonna say with like Edgar and stuff, depopulate would probably be an inclusion as well because they don't mind actually hitting the Edgar. So like Brutal Cathar on the Edgar is not bad. Like we take it out of the equation. I'm not too concerned with the excess damage for the turn. And if we play Brutal Cathar, it's likely just going to get picked up. So we're just going to go for the hasty swing on Godric and see if we can get something big next turn, right? Some kind of big play, man. We check the unearth here. It is return uh, this card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's not casting from the grave, so it doesn't work with celebration, but still. Still something to consider. All right. So seeing the land was good because now we can try the Brutal Cathar on the Edgar. So that doesn't block now. Um, actually, it wasn't going to block anyways. So we go Yotian Frontliner, Unearth. It's still the same amount of damage. So we're just going to go Officer instead. Get the Godric to a four. One is down to seven. Uh, board wipe the deck might just have the fourth board wipe, so I'm a little bit concerned, man. <laughs> a board wipe while Cathar is out too, and they get the Edgar back would be awful. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, dude, this is rough, man. The the opponents have been doing a thing today, uh, so far. <laughs> Your TN Frontliner can buff the Cavalier to four, then they flip the Edgar and they start generating 1-1s one that have lifelink. I'm just going to hold back for the turn, guys. Just going to hold back. I'm not 100% sure what we could do here. <laughs> um, yep, take the four down to eight. It's risky if they don't have something here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, guys. I, I think... 
I think we lost. <laughs> Godric's a really good draw, though. It's too bad the Unearth doesn't work for Celebration, right? But this is still good damage. Like, really good. Oh, wait a minute. Unearth does work for Celebration. What am I saying, guys? Unearth is entering, not... Uh, celebration isn't casting, it's entering. <laughs> what, what was I thinking there? No idea, man. Oh, spot removal for Godric's the only way. It's the only way for the opponent, dude. Oh, Brutal Cathar's good too, though. Spot removal for Godric, they need it. Because we unearth the frontliner and then fly in. I guess we just fly in, right? Wow, dude, what on earth, man? Uh, first of all, my I uh, apparently I had to uh, <laughs> had to use my two brain cells there <laughs> and play out the frontliner from the grave to see that it works with celebration. I don't know, like I know how celebration works. I know it's like enters the battlefield, and I also knew like you know. That unearthing isn't casting, but there was a part of me that was like, oh yeah, since this isn't casting, the celebration doesn't work. And yeah, obviously it does because it just needs to enter, which is kind of disgusting, man. So the opponent needed like a go for the throat for the Godric to survive the turn. I am taken aback by just how much power we can actually slam through um, after two Path of Perils, two Glistening Deluge, and a Depopulate. What? Hold up, guys. Did we just win versus five board wipes? <laughs> I'm guessing they didn't have spot removal. They just had a lot of board wipes, right? So this Glistening Deluge we don't get to see too often. It's a three mana sorcery. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Creatures that are green and or white get an additional minus two, minus two, which is why it was able to take out the Sunrise Cavalier there, right? Uh, if it was like a third Glistening Deluge, then it wouldn't have hit the Godric. And for that turn, we played the Cathar picking up the uh, card anyways. It could have also been the Copper Coat. Realistically, all we wanted to do was get the Godric to fly over the Edgar. So, wow, dude. Wow. I mean, I'm satisfied. I'm glad we came out of that with a victory. And I'm glad I, you know, I'm glad we unearthed. Just so I wasn't sitting there making the same mistake all day or something, right? <laughs> That's really silly of me. I apologize for that, guys. <laughs> now we know, right? <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Man, we're finding we're finding games really fast. So many people playing right now. Okay, okay. Yep. Yep. Hey, we go first. Dude, nice. All right. We might as well start with the king for two, huh? The reason we don't have more reinforced Ronin in here is because, yeah, we are kind of trying to buff a board state with Vanguard too. So, veteran. Okay. Lunar veteran. Oh, wow, our secluded courtyard. All right, play that out on human. And we could go Charming Scoundrel. Actually, it is going to be the Scoundrel. Oh, hello, opponent. Wicked roll on the Scoundrel and get that swing. Uh, I'll drop them that hello as well, even though it feels a little bit rude after the swing for some reason. <laughs> I blame trolls for making the hello seem rude. <laughs> Okay, Ash, dude, nice, okay. Two open, might be spot removal. Um, we're gonna go Ash and Reinforced Ronin. And then buffing the board state two times next turn with a couple vanguards seems disgusting. Ooh, big damage, big damage. This is, this feels like what the deck was supposed to be doing all these matches, but I guess like we, I don't think we went first any of those other games, did we? That picks up Ash pretty well. Back up to 10 because of the veteran. They're swinging. Okay. It's still gonna be the vanguards, right? I think so. I think so. That's a pretty good trade for the opponent, actually, but they'll still take one. And we'll get the ash back. Never mind, never mind. It's just like... Taking the four seemed pretty bad, but like, so like, the trade for a second seemed pretty good, but getting that Ash back while we have the two vanguards, yeah. Completely understandable to not block there. 
more removal could be tough because everything has the ward, and the scoundrel has wards too because of the double vanguards. Could be a four mana brutal Cathar pick up one vanguard. Ooh, okay, nice. Rocking the uh, the the Tory that we tried one time. Very cool. So we're gonna go. Yep, secluded courtyard. Keep seat of the empire as removal. Call human. Just totally fine to play. That's a nice hasty creature. Keep back their blockers. Suit of the Empire available. See where they end up blocking. It's a lot of damage. They might block with that Brutal Cathar. And wherever we don't want the trade to happen is where the Seat of the Empire is going to come into play. Mm, copper Coat trade. Mm, does this have... This has Vigilance and Trample. We don't mind this trade. Are they going to... I mean, this is still 8 damage, so they're going to have to chump with the veteran or or rethink their blocks here, right? So they chump with the veteran. So we don't want this trade. We want to go ahead and take this out and keep at least one vanguard on the board. And this is 4 damage coming through. Ronin bounces back to hand. Ash is over here now, too. All right, the opponent is going to need something to pick up a lot on this board. Uh, could be like Brutal Cathar, pick up Vanguard, and then some uh, some burn for the other two. Cathar's calling. Hey, GG opponent. GG, buddy. Dude, our board state was crazy that game. Hey, back up to gold. <laughs> okay. Good news, guys. Good news. Yeah, the, the set, or the... Um, the ranks just reset a little bit ago, and then I just, I haven't played any at all until this uh, new set came out, right? Which I think a lot of people were in the same boat. Like, how, how much did you guys play before the new set came out? Outside of getting some quests done, of course, right? Right into the next one. I'm feeling good about this deck, dude. I am. I, I think, like, we have a chance. Like, first of all, you, for any deck, you have to draw relatively decent. Like, this, this is totally fine. I'm down for this hand. Start with Veteran right into Ash. Maybe even the Scoundrel. Human. Uh, we got Officer, too. Uh, let's just go with Embrith Veteran here instead of the Officer for now. I think either one would have been fine. Yeah, two mana open over there. Rocking Demir colors. Ew. Let's go for Scoundrel number one and see if it gets countered. I like keeping the Ash here. Scoundrel hits. Let's go for the Wicked Roll then. So I don't think the Treasure Token is going to do anything for now. Wicked Roll on the Scoundrel because I feel like the 2-1 Veteran... Yeah. Spreading out the damage here is probably better than not, right? So if they spot remove the Scoundrel, at least the Wicked Roll still gets the damage through. Which is cool. Fading Hope. Okay, Wicked Roll technically hits the Grave there, right? So, nice. Not bad. And Bouncing Scoundrel back to hand isn't terrible for us either, so. Next turn, we could go Ash Party Crasher and the uh, Charming Scoundrel. Or Charming Scoundrel Treasure, then Ash Party Crasher, right? Okay, we should probably target that Jace, right? Human. And we go... Scoundrel. And then Treasure. Ash will be a 3-3. Because of the swing. Swing, swing. Take out that Jace. I think taking it out of the equation over hitting the opponent's face there is a little bit better. Four damage to the face would have been good too, but Shieldred gets picked up by Brutal Cathar, actually. Ooh, buddy. This is good. Uh, however, playing multiple things this turn, if we drew a land there, it would have been a Scoundrel Treasure into Cathar again to buff the Ash. But it's probably the, the best thing to do is to pick up that Shieldred before they can gain life next turn. Especially since they're tapped out right now as well. 
down to eight. I'm terrified of a board wipe, but trespasser. Oh, keeping two islands open could be like a fading hope too. After like if we swing in, they fading hope Cathar get shielded to block again, right? Could be really bad for us. Okay, so starting with the witch's mark could be good, and probably spreading this out for maximum amount of damage onto Scoundrel. And we'll discard the... Oh, they're going to rock the negate for that. Wow, dude. It's actually pretty decent, man. That's a that's a good target. <laughs> um, It's a really good target. Okay. Um, crap. Now the question is, do we still go for a full swing? They block here. Two, three, six damage. They get shielded, they gain, so it's not going to be a full swing. That actually, that stopped a lot. Uh, hold on, opponent. There's actually a lot to think about here, because if we do the veteran's ability, we could still go on to the ash and get that four through, potentially, which I don't mind. I don't mind that. Let's, let, you know what? For the sake of using new cards, let's do this, man. Let's do this. It goes up to a four, four, and now they can't successfully block that or a trade with it. They could still block if they wanted to, but going down to four. That was a really good counter spell uh, from the opponent there. Sacrifice a non-token creature, so scoundrel. We want to keep Cathar and Ash on the board for now. They have one card remaining in hand, guys. Battlefield Forge is terrific, man. Absolutely terrific. I think at this point we just spam things onto the board, right? So we start with uh, Charming Scoundrel, Treasure, and then Sunrise. It didn't have to be this way, but Charming Scoundrel has haste, which lets us go a little bit more wide here. And then the Ash gets a buff too, so... Nice, dude. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm having a really good time with the deck so far. <laughs> Feels like it feels like it's doing pretty good. Uh, some of these later games definitely is showcasing the deck a lot better than those earlier games, which were really weird. The the decks we went up against were bizarre to say the least, huh? I think the deck is fast enough where we can actually get at least one more game in before going over it in the final thoughts. And honestly, at this point, I have no clue how many games we played. It feels like we played a lot. It feels like we played eight games already, but I'm probably wrong. <laughs> oh man. Dude, Boros Humans feels really clean so far. I, I, I mean, outside of some draws here and there that seemed a little janky, feels really good. Wanna goes first. Okay, keepable. Definitely keepable. More Demir? Oh, jeez. I hope not, but I mean, we've been getting there, so. A good hand. We don't need any more land for now. Seeing the four land is fine early on, like eventually we'll want to be able to play multiple things anyways. Cut down on their turn. That lets us get the Feldon down without without it getting picked up, which is good for now. So we still get the two through. And I suppose it doesn't matter between the Battlefield Forge or the uh, planes, so we'll probably just go planes. Keeping three mana open. Okay, Esper Colors. That should be scary to us. Godric for the turn. I feel like Godric's not going to land, but I don't really see another line of play in hand that we would want to do anyways. So a counter here isn't too bad. Spot removal on Godric isn't too bad either, right? So I think it's totally fine. Okay, Dissipate on the Godric. Wow. This one with Feldon. They slowed us down a little bit with just two cards. Four mana open, but it's not a Wandering Emperor because they only have one white source. Okay. Start with Vanguard. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. Scoundrel. Okay. Wicked roll on the scoundrel. Sink for six. 
Wow, hey. Big damage, nothing from the opponent that turn is surprising. <laughs> oh no, I should have known it was gonna be a board wipe, man. I should have known. Uh, Cathar takes out the incubator when it comes. I don't think we play Cathar out of our hand. Um, and, like, more damage next turn seems good, but they're, they're gonna power this up to a 3-3, which blocks really well anyways. And they could just wait any... Oh, man, do I just play it? Do I? No, I don't think I do. I, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough decision, guys, because it could be Sunfall number two. So Mirix was their... Oh, Mirix was their mana fixer for the double white in the Sunfall. Um, yeah, we swing. If they block, then at least we get to see more off the top, off the Feldon, and then we can actually take out the uh, Incubator with the Cathar successfully. So we get to see three. We could see, like, a third Brutal Cathar at that point, too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Till the end of your next turn, you may play that card. Maybe Ash. Maybe it's Ash, right? Right? Hasty? Tasty goodness. We play it this turn. Yeah, we might as well. We might as well, because we might see more hasty cards off the top, too. Like, we could hold back in case they do find another board wipe or something. But we had open mana this turn. Oh, switches to night. Ooh. That's good stuff, man. Human. Oh, I should have kept that in hand. We do have ways to trade that out in here. So... Yeah, I should have I should have kept that land in hand, guys. Hope we don't get punished now and see ways to trade it out off the top. Down to two. I'm still gonna keep this Cathar in hand for now. I feel like the opponent's getting a little unlucky not seeing the second white source. No spot removal either, which is super weird. GG opponent? What on earth, dude? We got so unlucky there. We had to have. We had to have. <laughs> Um, well, the, the Sunfall was brutal. I just feel like, yeah, this is a Wandering Emperor style deck. They probably had multiple Sunfalls. This looks like a uh, Farewell style deck too. I'll tell you what though, in a match like this, we would have loved to see that creature land again. So we got to talk about this deck real quick, guys. Uh, we did really well with the list. Uh, looks like, did we get six victories, five victories today? I, I don't really know. I don't know how many uh, victories I started with. So I, I don't know how many games we played, but it feels like we won a lot. <laughs> when I go back through, I'll, I'll obviously check how many games we won, but here's the deck list again, guys. Feels good, feels strong. Uh, Secluded Courtyard actually doing a thing for us, huh? <laughs> You'll love to see it, man. You'll love to see just faster ways to get cards onto the board. And uh, this might be a great style for Boros. I'll tell you what, dude. Uh, this one, the Restless Bivouac, or however we pronounce this, right? Maybe we want two of these. Based on what we saw today, it looked like a lot of removal and a lot of board wipes for some reason. Uh, a little bit odd for what I have been seeing before the new set came out was just a lot of aggro, which is kind of what I was expecting to see. Not really what we saw a whole lot of today, but yeah, based on what you're seeing, I could easily see a couple of these. It does slow down the beginning turns, but if you are running into those board wipes, then at least you can power this up and hopefully get the rest of the damage through, right? So definitely worth the one of and definitely consider two of them based on what you're going up against, right? Uh, outside of that, all the humans were great. The frontliner was great. The unearth. I, I'm, a, I'm still a little embarrassed that I completely not forgot. I just didn't think about how the unearth was actually going to work with Celebration. Uh, but either way, we figured it out. <laughs> we figured out that Unearth does work with Celebration, of course, right? I think the two Wrench Resolve is fine, even though we didn't get to see it do a thing today, which is Mark was fine too. Like, the opponent even countered this, which was totally worth it for the opponent. This Witch's Mark was going to do a lot for us that game. So, I like the one of Reinforced Ronin. That was good. Just having all these one drops that happen to be two ones that happen to be human, so they all get buffed with Vanguard and everything, is kind of insane. So... I really like all the one drops here. A very, very nice. Really easy to pop off with Celebration. Uh, Godric is nasty, dude. Keep your eye on this card. I wouldn't be surprised at all 
if mono red's like new lineup is like turn one commando turn two charming scoundrel turn three godric and just you're just like popping off the whole freaking time dude <laughs> i'll tell you what man uh godric is solid and so is charming scoundrel of course right a lot of really great cards here ash seemed relatively decent too i i wish we would have seen it do a little bit more today but we kind of sort of did see it do a thing i just i i guess i just wanted to play with it in more games and actually get those counters going uh in more games too it felt a little hard to keep on the board i guess i, I don't know that's again we did so many games i'm gonna have to go through and watch them and see how often we actually did get to see ash because it just felt like we didn't see it too often but i guess we kind of sort of did because we closed out some games with it too so I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just crazy. That's an option as well, right? <laughs> yeah, overall, the mana base felt good. Everything felt good. Sunrise Cavalier, I like the three of. I wouldn't go up to four, and dropping it down to two might not be the best option either. Just like the Trample Haste just proves itself time and time again to be very powerful and exactly what you need at the right moment. Being able to plug Wicked Rolls on it from the Witch's Mark or the Scoundrel is sick too, so... Yep, yep, or just buff it with the Vanguards at that point too. Like I said, that Trample, man... That trample really gets the job done, so... Hey, if you made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know I did. I had a freaking blast with this build, man. I would play this one again. I would use this one to rank up if I enjoyed the ranking up process. So, like, I would to I could totally see sitting down and grinding out ranks with this one. Um, But, you know, it's the beginning of a new format. The set literally just released today, so I could be very wrong and, like, the meta could change and just be absolutely insane. Like, who knows where the meta is actually going to settle? Uh, so, you know, I guess take it with a grain of salt, right? <laughs> Either way, guys, hey, uh, thanks again for being here, and I will see you in the next video.